Hello everyone and welcome back to the Engineer Tomorrow video series for Thermodynamics. Um, today what I want to address is Pascal's principle, which is the principle we use to explain why. Um, you know, when you have a car, you know, how, how do you raise a car into the air uh, using hydraulics? Um, that's just the fundamental principle applied to that. And it's also useful in explaining how manometers work. Um, so we'll be describing how manometers work as well. In this video so and hopefully provide you some examples as well so Pascal's principle is uh, it essentially says that if you apply a certain pressure change at one location it will be directly transferred to a different location okay so in the first uh, demonstration I want to say there's a eight second hold on, let me Got a little car over here. And right here we got a little piston. Okay. And like we said earlier, there is a... Uh, so the pressure is related to the force applied on something per unit area. So the area here is small and the area here is large. The force here uh, should be small as well. And that will relate to a higher force over here. So with using Pascal's principle, like what we just said, um, so delta P1 is going to be di directly related to delta P2. And I'll call this 2, and I'll call this 1. So what does that mean? Um, right, you got your force in the, in the uh, location 1, with your area in your lo uh, location 1. It's going to be equal to your force in location, oh, sorry, force at location 2 over the uh, area at location 2. So what happens is since you have a smaller area over here um, you can apply a smaller force to have an increase in the pressure over here and it'll give you the force in the upward direction. So that'll give you a translation in the upward direction. And that's that's the essential uh, reasoning behind uh, how these car jacks, hydraulic car jacks actually work. Um, it might, it, it's a little bit more detailed than that, but um, that, that's the simplest explanation I guess I could give you for that. So using that, um, it kind of it kind of helps us to explain how manometers work. So what, what is a manometer? A manometer uses uh, changes in elevation and properties to explain the pressures of a system. So let's say we have a big box okay and it has a P that you don't know okay and but this box is connected over here and you have this loop section right here uh, sorry this is acting up Okay, so you have you have this section right here, and you have a fluid. Okay, that is related by this. Essentially, what a manometer allows you to do is determine. So th this is open to pressure at the atmosphere. Okay, and there's a fluid in here, and then there's a pressurized system that's right here. So, using the density of the fluid in here, you can actually determine what the pressure is on the inside. So how are we going to do that? We do that with uh, changes in gauge pressure. So if we know at this location that our pressure is at atmospheric pressure and we want to find what the pressure is over here, we say, okay, what is the change in pressure? Let's make this the center line of this. So this, this say you know what this uh, change in height is over here. So say you want to know what the pressure is here. So we use this, the concept of depth once again to determine what the pressure, the absolute pressure would be right there. So I'll call this position one and I'll call this position two. So P2 is going to be equal to um, P1, which is PATM, atmospheric pressure, plus, remember I said the pressure increases with a uh, with depth. So as you go farther down, your pressure is going to increase, so that makes sense. And what did we call gauge pressure with depth? We said that was the relationship between 
density, gravity, and the change in height. Okay, and from now on, I'm actually going to use a uh, specific weight. So specific weight is going to be gamma, and I'll just substitute that in for, for this value. So if you hear specific weight, that's density times uh, gravity, um, which is different than specific gravity, which I guess I can go ahead and explain now. So specific gravity, I'll call it SG. That's actually uh, density of the fluid over the density of water. Density of water is a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. Okay, so just just so you know, sometimes they refer to the specific gravity of a fluid, and just know that this is the relationship. And you, if you know the specific gravity, and you already know what the density of water is, you can determine the density of, uh, of the fluid as well. So it's just it's just a different way to explain the properties of a fluid. But anyways, back to the point. Uh, so pressure at position two is going to be equal to pressure at position one plus the chain, the gauge pressure uh, by the step. Okay. So say uh, we go from position two to position um, position three. Let's call this three. Okay. So essentially, since the depth isn't changing in this section right here, we can say that that's also going to be equal to two. Okay. So if we want to go to three, we say the pressure at 3 is going to be equal to pressure at 2, okay, minus, then, minus the, oh, I almost wrote down density. So, specific weight times the change in elevation. So, again, the reason that it is negative is because if you go, if you decrease, decrease the depth, so if you go higher up in the fluid, your pressure is going to go down, so we account for that by this minus sign that you see over here, okay? And that, that should make intuitive sense. So if you're coming up in a swimming pool, the pressure is going to be less. Now, if if this if this section right here is let's say this is air, it's okay to say that you know um, the pressure inside this tank is going to be the pressure at position three because there's not a significant change in um, in the gauge pressure as you cre increase in elevation for air. Okay, so you could essentially say that the pressure over here is the pressure at 3. Okay, but what if it's a different uh, a different fluid? What if it's oil or, I don't know, uh, let's, let's say it's fluid X. Okay, and fluid X has a density that, well, that um, allows you to vary the, the pressure significantly with depth. It's simple. I mean, if you want to know what it is up here, you could just use the elevation relationship to determine what it is up there. If you want to know what it is at the bottom of the tank, you can do that as well. So essentially, one one important tool which you will actually probably learn in the future is you can actually go straight from position one to position three by saying that um, that the pressure at position three is going to be equal to the uh, the pressure at position one plus this change in elevation. So I'll call this delta Z. So the, the gauge pressure do that. So that would be the specific gravity times the um, delta Z of that. And I can prove that to you by actually combining these two over here. So if I say P3 equals, or sorry. Um, P2 equals P3 plus gamma delta H2. We'll call this delta H2 is 1 1 delta H2. Um, delta H2. Okay. Uh, then we plug that in up there. We say P3 plus gamma delta H2 is going to be equal to pressure 1 plus specific gravity times delta H1, okay? And uh, so now we move this over to the other side. We say pressure three is gonna be equal to pressure one. And this gamma is not actually gonna change because you're using the same fluid, okay? So you say plus gamma delta H1. 
1 minus delta h2. Okay, so if you know, um, <coughs> so if you know the change in um, height from position 1 to position 3, you just put that in here, and we'll call this delta z. Okay, and that's that's a that's a tool that's important to know. You know that way you can skip a couple steps between going to two and then two back to three, and you know it could get very tedious if you have a bunch of uh, fluids going on. You know a manometer that has a bunch of little loops. Um, it's just it's just helpful to use that. Uh, I think I think I've said enough for this video. Um, thank you guys for watching very much, and I'll I'll see you guys in the next video.